This is Comet Picks by the Glick. Hey, and I'm your host, Jason Glick. How you doing, Jason Glick? I'm doing just fine, John. Yourself? Mm, I'm good. Just um, recovering from the week so far. So, <laughs> anyways, ah, uh, yes. Um, the weather here is like I think it wants Cold to rain wet. or something. I don't know. Yeah, so it was. I mean, it was wet. It was raining like when I got up this morning, but now it seems to have just gone away as it is as it usually does around in Southern California. But, yeah. but as it is, it's like you know. So I'm just. It's just nice having things like cold here regularly. So compared to like how they've been warm for like the last months or so. Got it. And? <laughs> and? <laughs> what okay, is well, new out there, Jason? What is new indeed? <laughs> okay, well, what's new is that we think that um, I finally got the last um, volume of one of the series I've been reading um, uh, very, very regularly and very very avidly over the last couple of years. That is um, Jason Aaron and R.M. Guerra's um, Indian crime drama, Scalped. Now, long-time readers will know that I... I that I um, re- that I really like this series. I've written, I've talked about it before. My best of podcast, I think, back in 2010, and I've also and I've also written up the um, so, like the last couple of volumes. I'm um, pretty like um, regularly as as they've come out. Cause it's been because it's, I mean, it's like it, it, it's a series that you know that that could have um, descended into um, like pointless um, like depressing miserabilism, but um, it actually managed to, but not only managed to avoid that, it also managed to like, tell a tell a compelling story that with several um, deep, deep, interesting and flawed. This is not good. Characters over the course of its sixty issue run. Now, going back to the very beginning here, um, Scalp starts off with the arrival of a uh, it's like a one dash bad horse. Um, pro- um, he, his mother sent him away from, from the um, Prairie, Prairie Rose um, um, Indian Reservation years ago. She didn't want him to grow up in the um, in the, cess- in the, the cesspool of um, crime, alcoholism, and um, and um, general and general it's like um, hopelessness that engulfs the, the, the reservation. But um, but now he's now he's back and he's he's looking to make a name for himself. So he hooked up with um, with Lincoln Red Crow, the uh, he- it's like the head of the, re- the head of the reservation and basically and the boss of the local of all the local crime. Um, crime, like um, crime groups out out there as well. Um, Red Crow is also busy um, working on opening a casino that's going to bring all sorts of money to the uh, to, to the reservation as well as more problem problems as well. Now Dash's mother, Gina Bad Horse, she's been an activist for Indian rights for years, and she's just not thrilled at all to see that her son is hooked up with the man who she once loved, but now is seen just become a regular thug. But you know that's but while the um, while the, the uh, the conflicts between this group of, of people would have, might have been enough to sustain a series or at least a good maxi series. That's not all, because it turns out that Dash didn't come back to the, inter- the reservation under his own free will. He's actually working undercover for the FBI under the under the auspices of one um, Agent Nitz, who has a um, huge, serious mad on for Red Crow, because he blames him for the deaths of two of his um, good friends in the FBI um, a couple um, two decades back. Now, it's like this. Oh, so basically, like um, you got you got Dash. Um, now you have Dyke Dash, like sweating under the cover of his. Of, I'm working as a, as a tribal cop, trying to get the goods on, on on Red Crow. You've also you also had him mixing it up with um, Red Crow's daughter Carol, who he used to kind of have a thing with back when they were kids. But now she's growing up, growing up into be a junk into a depressed junkie after her dad did everything to keep her on the on the res, including kill her boyfriend after he tried to steal from him. Then you've also got um, one Arthur Pengrass, um, also known as Catcher, who is the um, spiritualist of, like, of the. Uh, he, he would see himself as a spiritualist of the of the reservation, but he's, but he's also could just be playing crazy because he believes that he's get he gets visions from the from the thunder gods, and he sees dashes on um, return to the to the reservation as like it's time that the, the, the reckoning is coming from ever like for ever for everyone at, around around now. It's like now, the, um, a- now Aaron. Um, I've said before that Aaron, that well, Aaron's um, most fun work is going to be his stuff at Marvel because he just uh, loves to. He's great embracing its the inherent craziness of a universe that has infinite possibilities. Scalp though is probably going to remain like the series that you know. Hey, like when he that you know, like when he shows you, like, shows you, know, hey, this is what I can accomplish as a writer. This is this is what you're going to break out. This is probably when, like, this is probably selling for him long after you know he stopped he stopped writing X Men because it's. Because it's 
because it's a great it's, it's a great compelling story because like because not only did like because he eventually like to put to develop the thread the various story threads you know basically you know Dash being undercover um, Gina's eventual murder and the um, struggle to find out who killed her and while we find out who killed her um, much sooner than everyone else does the, the shock of who actually is the perpetrator is a great um, is a great shock and it shows you how it's like how thin the line between um, between love and madness can really be. It's a hint, by the way. Anyway, but um, but as it but as it goes on, I mean, like it's like you know, like lots of bad things happen to these characters. I mean, like people die. Um, like um, Dash winds up inadvertently getting a kid killed after he tries to track down his mother. He teaches he tries to bond with the kid by taking him on camping trips, um, teaching him to shoot, and um, that um, sets him on the path to trying to um take down the uh, crazy ass person. Um, like one uh. When Britt Fillenworth, also known as Diesel Engine, a um, white guy who is one sixteenth Kickapoo, and wants to be wants something more to be, than to be like a badass Indian brave. So, but and even though he could he could have come off as a huge horrible caricature, um, Aaron is really good at um, at, at developing like developing the majority of the cast, like showing us that there's more to these characters than, than first meets the eye. Like like I said with um with um with Fillenworth or, or Diesel. It's like we find. I mean, yeah, he's like just you know crazy white guy wants wants to play at being an Indian. But then, then we also get to find out his um his awful upbring, upbringing and just you know it's like how that you know that that no one tried to dissuade him from the uh, from trying to be an Indian and how his effort to try and like actually be an Indian just kind of like only led to more heartbreak and depression with it, with him and his family. We also got um, Nitz himself, who for the majority, of, who the good first half of the, of the series, is a awful caricature in terms of like, hey, I want you, dash bad horse. I I hate I hate engines. I hate Red Crow. I want and I hate you too. But you're gonna like work for me because like I'm your boss. And he's just this horrible caricature until we get to his one solo issue, where we find out just you know just why he's so bent out of shape about. It's like about uh, nailing Red Crow and why he believes that you know this is the. It's like. Like you know, like I have to do this in order to make things right with with the um the guys who um who like did who went out of their way to um save my life and um, get me the revenge I, I so wanted. It also shows you what what it cost him as well in terms of family life, family life, and just you know just being a decent human being as well. And also, uh, sorry, who was I going to say? Oh yeah, um, Sheriff Wooster Carnow, who um could have been like a who was also introduced as, a, as an awful caricature. But you know, it's like that's, I mean, it's not like a broken record. Right but that, my point is that that Aaron, um, like, manages like to um, this character, like, like character and um, depth to all the uh, to all the members of the cast, especially um, like Bad Horse, because I mean, he, I mean, it's, he, I mean, like, my, one of my defining moments for this series is just seeing how, I mean, like, how he, um, like, slowly succumbs to the, how it first succumbs to the pressure of of his um, under undercover work, and um, starts to and um, winds up taking up. Um, um, taking up, um, start to developing a drug habit with, with Carol, and it's like, and and when you first see this type of side, you you're kind of thinking like, like, oh no, you don't want this to happen. Well, no, first starts off, he starts out like drinking, and you're thinking like, oh man, don't do this. You're better than that. You're the protagonist. You have to stand up for something. But then, but then at the end of like volume, volume four, you see him say, hey Carol, show me how to do that, and it's like. Oh no! And it's just like you know, it's like you just it's like like Aaron just like throws him a shovel right there, and it's kind of like you know, it's like it's not about things getting better. It's like things are going to get worse and worse and worse before before there's even the hope of, the, of improvement. And things do, but it's but it also just takes um t- it takes takes time, and it, it takes time in order to work itself out through the uh, like through, through the characters of, characters themselves. And also like even though this series um focuses on a lot on Native American culture. It's like it doesn't like act as like kind of like a, like a as an evan- it's like it doesn't evangelize, you know, like their like their cause or their their plight. I mean like through overt means. I mean the way like like Aaron shows the um Prairie Rose reservation to be like a filth like a I um God help me, uh, a hive of scum and villainy uh, on the likes of which we haven't seen outside of most um famous science fiction franchises. But but um, and and while he doesn't say you know, I mean, but um, just by showing us this rather than just you know telling us you know this is how what we need to do in order to get better. I mean, he probably does more to add 
advocate for their for, like for, for their cause. I mean, like chances are, it's like even though like this is like things on Prairie Rose are shown to be very bad, I'm willing to bet the um, actual truth of the truth of the matter is that things the, the real life is actually um, worse. Um, but also, but um, over its but over its sixty issues, um, Scalp really does give the feeling that Aaron knew where he was going from the from the very first issue. He does a good job of calling back from from uh, from old ish from old issues, showing how things um, from way back in the beginning affect affect things towards see towards the very end. And it's and it's refreshing and and it's like and it's just, it just feels really really good to know that he that, that you know he that this. The series is allowed to run to its natural natural end, even though you know it's sold um, dangerous around the levels of sweet fuck all during majority of its run. But um, as far as the um, climax goes, because um, final volume um, ten is is Trails End, and it takes place after um, Dash finally um, pegs um, Red Crow for murder and um, re- reveals to him that he's been an FBI agent all this time. Now he's now, in, now he's able to use this information to like put to put Red Crow away, but as things pick up about um, eight months later after after those events, we find out that things aren't um, aren't entirely settled because because Catcher is still out there working his strange brand of justice throughout the uh, the reservation against the uh, people against the against the um, council members who were working with Red Crow during this time, and also. Um, Dash House also has some personal business to settle to settle with him as well. Problem is that there's that um, there's all these other that there's all these other people who but um, some of Dash's um, past actions are really coming back coming back to haunt him here. And even though he was and you just know that you know, even though these things were set up to be all right in those first couple issues, you just know that things are just going to go straight to hell later on. And they they do as Dash as Dash finds himself on the run on the run from the law and. And for seem with some some people he really didn't want to um, before before the volumes end. Overall, it's like I felt that it was a very that um, Trails End was a very worthy um, um, conclusion to the series. And you know, it's like and it was, but it was also just interesting to like read that last that last issue and just see that you know it's like that you know these people they're just like their parents they're kind of, they're locked into in it's like into these certain paths you know like Dash you know being being an out being being on the run, it's like on the run and alone. Um, Carol, like finally overcoming her drug her drug habit, and, t- and um, trying to become a respectable person within the uh, the community. Red Crow finally embracing his it's like like his heritage and not trying to be part of a white man's world. Because there's a, there's a great moment early on in the series when um when um we see that Red Crow is pay- is um, paying off their um the bureau of, the bureau of Indian um affairs um chief who um, helped them set up this casino and um. This is and it's and it's um and he he's doing it in this um hotel room where like, he and his buddy where he and where the, where the bureau guys buddies are just like having this like great ass party with alcohol hookers uh, and and probably drugs as well and they're just ruining it and he says like hey Greg take Red Crow what are you so ha- what are you so um sad about you finally made it man welcome to white man's world and that kind of like sums up Red Crow's like character for a lot of this stuff he's trying to. He can advance the cause of his his people, but he's just doing it in all in all the wrong ways. But the uh, but like I said, the, the finale, it's like the final volume does make everything worthwhile, and um, it's like, and I was and I was thoroughly really glad that it wrapped wrapped up things and it's like in the way in the way it did. It makes it makes for a nice, great, um, contained saga in ten volumes. Highly recommend it. But I'd be remiss if I wasn't talking about the art as well, because um, see. Because it's also because it um, RM Guerra is the um, primary artist for this for this series, and well, I th- I like him a lot. He's the epitome of what I think is it represents a good Vertigo artist. He doesn't have to be nec- he doesn't have to be pretty, um, but he has to be expressive. And his characters, he's very much his art style is very much based based in the realm of caric- caricature. But that just gives, but in this case, more often than not, it gives his um. His his characters look like um, an exaggerated person that like, communicates their emotions that much better. This isn't probably going to fly with a lot of people who prefer you know like square jawed um, Jim Lee type 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 um, superhero stuff. But I think that his his series his like Guerra's art captures the uh, like the, the grit to to not 
like I said, the grit, the grit, the the uh, emotion, the emotion, and it's like an act, an action of this, like the character of the characters and, and their setting. Um, we also get lots of um um great artists who've contributed to the series as well. Um, one is um see so um Dev, but um, but I think but but it's still but it's still always um. Nice to see um, like Guerra's approach. I mean, like we get um, other artists like um, Davide Ferno, who um, produced a lot of the um, a lot of the secondary issues um, here here as well. And he's got a nice um, nice sketchy sketchy style. Um, Francesco Francavilla, who um, killed it in Batman: The Black Mirror last year. I didn't you know, I didn't realize it until afterwards. That, hey, you know, he actually contributed the issue as scalped, but um, and it's nice here, but it's not. But apparently he was still like you know honing his style before he was you know knock his dead, knock his dead with Batman, and um, also re- um, some vertigo regulars like John Paul Leon and um, Daniel Zelch also contribute um, strong work here. But the overall the, ser- the series, is, like I said, it's, the look of the series isn't going to be for be for everyone. But I think it I think it fits if it's I, I can't imagine the series without anyone but Guerra. Also, um, other minor um, reservations that the series um, is also not particularly subtle, um, like as far as its um, as far as its act, action goes. I mean, you're it's a it's a very it's a very violent series. Sometimes you get, get um, like downright over the top, such as when um, Nitz um, strikes on his own and to um, like kill himself and winds up um, stopping a terrorist plot, or when the um, like army plane crashes into the uh, into the home of this one this one um, Indian couple living in the bad. Badlands, so it, like that. But you know, it's like it's. I actually, it's such interesting to observe this in the context of Jason Aaron's um, Marvel work because he's just. Because um, I mean, he can just go. He can just go over the top as much as he wants right here, as, over there. But here, it's like he's actually able to, like, to you know, to um, like um, gra- to ground things a bit more in not not really realism, but, but logic within the context context of the work. They like said it might, may not be to everyone's taste. But if anything, I do recommend I like, pick up the first two volumes, um, and if you like if you like what you see there, I can guarantee you're gonna like you're gonna um, like like what comes after that. John, any thoughts? This time, not particularly, sir. All righty then. <laughs> okay. Well, like I said, it's like scalp. Um, like I said, it's, it's highly recommended, and m- much like with um one of Vertigo's other long-running series, DMZ. Expect to hear me talk about this again at the um, in the Best of the Year podcast as well. Okay, well, that's excellent, guys. Um, <clears throat> the Best of the Year podcast? Wait a second. Are you saying that we're nearing the end of the year already? It feels like it, but... <clears throat> it's, we're actually getting... Even though it's October, but also I feel because I feel because I know... Because I've already got the last two podcasts of the year planned out. Uh-oh. And also... So it disappoints me because I was fully expecting to um, put 20th Century Boys on this list, but it turns out because um, for, for um, due to reasons of shipping and stuff, this is actually um, will be releasing the, the concluding volumes of this, of this that series, 21st Century Boys, in January and March of next year. So you expect to see it for the best of 2013. Alrighty then, and with that we'll uh, we'll call your podcast. Uh, concluded for the evening and um and we'll talk to you later we will Bye. see you in two all right see ya <laughs>